Uh, good morning. Uh, uh, can you hear me? Yes. I'm we can hear you clearly, and this is uh, Dr. Ramesh here in the panel along with. I am Dr. Muriyasin here, Ajit. Uh, oh, wonderful. So, uh, greetings from Madras Medical Mission. We are going to the first case. Uh, my colleague, Dr. Vijay Kumar, is doing that case. And uh, we will uh, just go ahead in a minute. We are just doing an intravascular ultrasound uh, now and uh, then come to the case. Uh, so this is a 75-year-old lady who came with dyspnea on exertion, uh, had uh, treated for LVF. The ECG showed a left bundle branch block. And the echo showed mild global hypokinesia with an LVEF of 45%. No significant regional wall motion abnormality. The renal parameters are normal. And if you can please play the diagnostic angiogram done about three to four days ago. Can you see that, Ramesh? Yeah, we can see it clearly. Yeah. 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 So there are two areas of worry. One, one is the circumflex, where there is a tight lesion in the mid-segment and a distal 80% stenosis. The LAD is free of disease, and, and the right coronary artery has a total occlusion in the mid-segment, and the left coronary fills that CTO uh, just at the distal uh, end of the re-entry. So uh, this is a syntax code of 12. And um, uh, uh, myself and Dr. Uh, Vijay Kumar were planning to fix the circumflex before we came live so could, we could go ahead with the right when we're live. But we are in the process of just finishing that circ, which we will show you. So. Vijay, can you just go ahead and tell us what, tell them what we did. Uh, just start today's images, please. Yeah, uh, can, can you see uh, today's live images? Yeah, we can see that. Yeah, uh, there are two lesions. Uh, they are not actually tandem lesions, two separate ones. And angiographically appear to be uh, good landing zones for both the stents. And the lady had an inferior wall changes, so we did not do an FFR for this. And directly went ahead with uh, uh, PCI. And uh, so can we show the intravascular images, please? So it should be a straight forward lesion, uh, two lesions and uh, two small uh, short stents here. So a any comment? Angiographically, we could not see any calcium here. Can we have the live iris yeah. pictures? Can, this just to sh uh, just show that how to do an iris guided stenting. Here you can just see we are doing a pullback from distally after dilatation. Stop here. Can you see a dissection at three o'clock position? Just go back. Yeah. Go back a bit. Can you see something there in three o'clock? Yeah, it is visible, and this is Dr. So Shinivas. So there is a dissection yeah. induced yeah. by balloon. Yeah. Yeah. Then come back. And uh, uh, proximal to the lesion, vessel looks very good. So it's a good landing zone. There's no block. Uh, distally, the uh, vessel was around 2.3 millimeters and approximately around 2.5. So we decided to put a 2.25 stand. Can you see something at the 7 o'clock position? Uh, that is your great cardiac vein that comes yeah. along. Uh, uh, with your LCX and any branch which comes towards that great cardiac vein is your OM branch and anything comes on the opposite side is your atrial branch because the artery comes on the uh, atrial side. Okay. Yeah, just here you can see a lot of clock. We are approaching the proximal lesion and uh, hardly any calcium again. And approximately and distally, we had good landing zones. 
So, this uh, so two type A lesions uh, distal one is uh, uh, 2 to 5 millimeter and proxy one is 275 millimeter. We measure the length and distal one was 15 millimeter and the proximal one was again 15 millimeters. So, we choose the 2 to 5 millimeter stent distally 2 to 5 and 18 and yes we were prepared well uh, and deploy the stand and did not post dilate. The proximally uh, we put a 275-18, let us go forward. So, this is a 225-18 onyx distally and a 275-18 onyx proximally. So, this is what we have finished now and we post dilated the stent proximally with a 275 up to 20 non-compliant balloon and Vijay will just read the IVIS post procedure now. Yeah, yeah. just uh, go through the IVIS please. So, any comments in this whole uh, treatment? I think angiographically the result looks pretty good. Let us see what the IVS says. I am sure it must be good on IVS too. IVS shows, yeah. We have sized the stent up to the vessel size, so it is, uh, should be okay. Can you, can you see the distal vessel? Distal vessel looks very small, it is around 2 millimeter. So, the, here the stent starts, there is no dissection and the stent is close to the vessel wall. So, it is well expanded and we are coming back and you can just see still it is close to the vessel wall. So, I do not think we can expand anything more if you expand more it will rupture. So, just uh, this well expanded stent and uh, let us just to see the proximal zone and it is landed in a good area. So, no dissection again and you can see the great cardiac vein at 6 o'clock position here. So, IVAS does not have a rotational orientation. So, the previously it was in the 7 o'clock position and it was in 6 o'clock position now. So, now we can see the distal stent again no uh, proximal stent, no dissection distally when well expanded. You can see the side branch, a lot of plaque here and eccentrically expanded now. And proximally it looks all right. Little mark, uh, stop here, go two frames. So, the vessel has become 3.2, 3.4 proximally. So, if you, you expect a little smaller position with a 275 stent and because it is very short area less than a millimeter and stent is well expanded and we are not going to do anything for this. Can we have some areas uh, Benjamin? Yeah, Ajit would you have cho chosen a single stent to cover both the lesions you know that that is one um, if you yeah, had chosen well, single stent. The problem strain. was. Uh, yeah. Yeah, the problem was that there was a mismatch. Yeah, absolutely. It is a 2 millimeter vessel distally One and it is a 275 one. in the proximal Short. with a 3 almost in the uh, proximal part of the proximal lesion. So, if you have to put something it will be a long tapered stent sort of landing with 225 distally and uh, maybe reaching a 3 o on the proximal. So, this is something which we have really always have to think about. There is also an area of normal segment, so you would put an unnecessary stent in that normal area. So, we are more and more going towards uh, imaging based focal stenting and trying to avoid too much of long and stents in most patients. And IVS wise one of the most important predictor of uh, uh, instant stenosis is the stent length more than 28 millimeters. And we had a fairly normal vessel in between, so we just wanted to avoid a long stent. Another issue taking a 48 millimeter in the Celsius may be a may be a challenge. So, that is why we just decided to put two stents. Okay, so we will if you are all happy with the uh, okay, so and we are just we optimizing that the proximal part of the stent with a 3 millimeter stent. 3 O balloon. We measured it the malar position comes around 2 to 2.5 millimeter in length. We are just optimizing with the 3 O balloon. <laughs>
Okay, so, uh, so again we have to use malopposition very judiciously. As you know, malopposition has not much of acute events. And uh, unless that is underdeployed malopposition, uh, you won't have a problem. Okay, so we are trying to just position it right at the ox tip. I am just a little protruding it. Yeah. Outside. And, and just going up to nominal pressure. Yes, I will just come back a bit. In a just protruding it to just mal, uh, correct the mala position. So, we are just using nominal pressure, no high pressure, just to open that vessel up. That's enough. And that is what we have done. Get the IVS again. Can I get the IVS here again? So, it is a normal vessel with mala position. So, you have to select a bigger balloon and go at nominal pressure that is enough to correct the mala position. You do not have to apply high pressures. So, is there any difference of opinion here on that strategy on the proximal segment? I think that is uh, okay. You took a 3 Very millimeter non compliant balloon. You don't have to do anything. Yeah, non compliant. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Even you can use a compliant balloon. But we are just going at nominal. It just went at 10 atmos. It was just to open up the malopusion, not really to affect the plaque. And still, we have some malopusion. We are not worried much. So, we go back with the IVAS just to be sure what we did with the 3 O is good. Yeah. Okay. Ready for pullback? Ready for pullback. Uh, RCA guiding ready system. Yeah, pullback. So, just see that we are just imaging the proximal part of the stand. Stand looks even bigger now. And uh, now, it is a very short area of mala position, we are just leaving it. Just go uh, freeze and go back, just measure the length of mala position here. Go back, go back. Yeah, it, it is hardly a millimeter, so we can just leave it. I will remove it. Yeah. So, we will just take a, another shot and then go after the right which is what we were planning to do before you came on live. Okay. Okay. Perpendicular view, please. It is a good result. I don't think you should yeah, chase me. So, now we are going to keep the guiding in. Uh, we are checking an ACT before so, uh, putting the another guide. So, we are going to do a bilateral axis. We have a bilateral axis because of the because of the total occlusion and we are going to check the ACT now. It is very important to keep the ACT up. ACT capital. ACT. Vijay, in the routine cases um, like this, yeah. uh, just LCX alone, uh, I am not talking of the RC lesion. How often do you use IVS in your practice now? Uh, if patient is affordable, we want to use all cases, uh, but not for type A lesions. Uh, it yeah. is uh, all left mains we use IVS in our institute, and uh, uh, even a bit complex cases, particularly long lesions, we use IVS, and calcified lesions almost yes, always. Sure. So these are the three subsets we use: it. left mine, calcified lesions, and long lesions. And whenever you have problem, you have a haziness or any problem angiographically, then we use IVS. This lady, we could have done even OCT, uh, because this other side is a CTO, we thought we go as IVS. Okay, so the plan now here is to use the bilateral axis. We've got the left uh, catheter in sister, RCA sister, guiding. Plus sister. So we gave 7,500 heparin to start with. It is uh, almost half an hour yeah. now. So, we are given an ACT. So, here we have to maintain ACT of 350 and more. Why did you choose this option of doing the LCX first and not the CTO? Uh, well, one is that the CERC was providing the collaterals. 
and uh, I wanted to just be sure that we are getting get pick good pictures. And the second thing was heart failure is admission. I thought maybe we just relieve one lesion before doing the other one. So it is L6 is easily treatable one. Yeah, that's fair, right? RCO, even though it looks very short lesion, it may be difficult because there is a bifurcation at the distal cap. So I thought maybe we just fix this one first and uh, then decide about RCA. Okay. Okay, so we'll just get through with the shots and then then go so ahead. Give a picture, uh, then you can go to on. Uh, miss, we can discuss the strategy, then we can go to. Dr. Shivakumar and come back here. Okay, so we're going to take some shots now, diagnostic. So get the pressures, uh, sister. Both pressures on, please. Okay, so and please tell us the ACT sister when it comes. <coughs> yeah. Okay. We so take some this is Dr. Anand there. Okay. You want to take a simultaneous? Yes, sir. I will, I will take the anti-grade. Yes. Yeah. So, Vijay so is going to take the anti-grade shot and I am going to take the retrograde. Yeah. So, don't move the table, please. Don't move the table. Ready, sir? Okay. So, okay, here sir. I go. So, you can see that it's a short segment. Yeah, yeah it is a short segment, nearly about 15 so to 18 minutes. So, go to an RAO. Yeah. One, one, only problem is that there is a branch, RV branch coming in the distal cap. And the occlusion is in a so bend. Yeah, occlusion the, is in the bend. The, the actual occlusion point is in a bend, about 30 to 40 degree angle is there. Yeah. Yeah. So again, we are taking now an RAO, same strategy. I take the shot first. And Vijay continues the shot after that. Okay, you can't, picture. you can't get a great picture here. Because uh, it's a very small RCA, we use the side hole catheter. We have not, not got a good picture. Okay, so I think maybe... For it's a very short segment. So, I think uh, Benjamin will have the previous picture. So, any discussion on the wires you would like to use? Uh, Ajit, can you take a lateral view? Will that help? Yeah, sure, I can try to take a lateral view. No. I'll just take a lateral view better. Okay, so we're trying to get a lateral for you. Okay, that's good. Yeah, just get the top out. Kai kai, sister. Can you move the center of the catheter position? Sister, get a micro catheter. Micro catheter, Gaia 2 wire. Okay. So I am ready here, Vijay. I am going to shoot. Okay, that's better. So maybe we'll use this view. So we'll use a micro catheter and a torsion finder yeah. and get the ACT. Gaia wire please. Uh, any, so any wire size in this? Uh, would you always start with a Gaia 2 in such cases or would you try to no, probe uh, with we, a… Uh, we thought maybe, uh, no, uh, uh, XPR would have been fine. Yeah. 
we are not very sure. It looks like an occlusion in between. If had a channel, would have done started with that. Is there a faint channel there? Can you see a faint channel maybe, there? Maybe, maybe. I'm not very sure. So you could… Maybe a, a little more strength will help and not much different. Actually, reason, yeah. The wire strength. That re wire. Yeah, Vijay, it, the faint channel actually is from the retrograde actually rather than anti-grade. Maybe you'll have to puncture the… Guide, guide to I think probably will yeah. take it through quickly. Maybe we'll see, sir. Maybe you can… Meantime, you can go to Dr. Kumar and come back in 15 minutes' time. So, wh what's the guide wire which uh, you've chosen? It's a guide. So, we will just go through with some pictures where we are. Okay, so there it was not that easy just to start off with. Yeah. So let me just just one minute, let me just get this balloon out for a minute. Yeah. Yeah. I'll just finish the dilatation and then get back to you. 14, 15, 15, 18. That's it. Okay. Okay, so it's a very hard lesion and, and we had some difficulty. So let's go back to the pictures. Okay, let's just get back to the pictures and then tell you what happened. Okay. So, you can see this total occlusion. Uh, this is uh, the epiglass when we left you. The, we used the Gaia 2 and the Gaia 2 went sub first. And you can see it. Uh, That's sort of there where it was subentimal. So what we then did is that I changed the we changed the wire movement, and you can and you can try to get into that branch, the R V branch. So you can see I brought it back. Got it into the branch. Okay. Had some difficulty because here it is sub ultimo. Can you go into where we went into the branch first? So we have a picture of it going into the branch. Here it's sub ultimo. Okay, so that's in the branch. Once we are in the branch, we're sure that it's luminal. Then we quite slowly brought the uh, microcatheter close to the bifurcation and then turned the wire uh, back. And there you can see that it is into the lumen. So, so this is how you wire CTO once you get into the, uh, the false lumen. Okay, so the false wire was through, we still have troubles, the balloon was in tracking. Uh, Ajit, what would be your so option at that stage, had you not got into the acute marginal branch, what other options would you have tried? Uh, well, you've used a parallel wire, kept that wire there, used another wire. There are many techniques uh, where you can use. Yeah. Uh, multiple views have to be taken, sure that it's intimal or sub yeah. Now, in the. the you grab uh, the microcatheter, move it out, and then use the 106 balloon, and you can see it had a lot of difficulty to yeah. craft through, track it through. Okay, so we somehow managed to get that balloon down. And we have now the balloon has burst, so let me see what we've done. So, uh, can we have another 106 balloon? Okay. Ready? 
So we're taking a left shot again. The ACT is pretty high, more than 400. We can't make too much out of that. Okay. Anyway, I'll try to get the wire back into the lumen. Oh, back into the ground, sorry. And get another one balloon. Can you get the balloon ready for that, Sister P? The wire has got a little distal problem. Would you like to exchange this wire with the regular okay. uh, soft wires now that you have crossed the CT of one? Yeah, I will, I will. I kept the soft wire ready. Yeah, so let's get the balloon down first and then... So we're trying the 106 first. So, uh, we hope this one will do better. That's the point where we have some issues. I'll just go down a bit. Yeah, go up there. 14, 15, 16. Keep it. 14, 15, 16. Keep it. 14, 15, 16. Keep it. 18, 18, please wait, 18, please wait, 18, please wait. I think we have done something there, so let me just see if, if, if the balloon wall is it's going through now. So I hope that we should have done some good there. Okay, so now I'll try to get the software out and need to be a bit careful with these wires because with the tips of the wires we've had a couple of perforations. You always watch the visible wire tip. And have the other wire too. Sion blue which we use for the left side. Talk of please. I don't know how much time we have, but we'll try to show as much. Okay, that's good. So that's the other branch. And, and this seems to be main vessel. Go to the cranium, please. Let's try to get this wire. as distally down as possible and I'm trying to get it into the PLV
escape. It seems to go favorably into the other vessel. Can I have a New York wire, please? Okay. Yeah, New York City on blue. So what you're trying to do is now get another good wire. The other wire had a little bit of bit of uh, tip fracture, so just got that out and trying to get another wire down. I'd like to get into the PLD and then use another longer balloon. Okay, why please? Any other ideas from the panel? Microcatheter exchange? Yeah, yeah, that's the other thing which we... Can you give an anti-grade injection? In RCA anti-grade? Okay, yeah. okay, okay, okay. I don't want to, uh, I don't want to pick a flap in case you've gone somewhere. Yeah. against it, but as much as possible in a CTO, mm -hmm. uh, it's better to avoid anti-grade shots. Uh, that's the general principle. And uh, here we go. Why it seems to go down that PDA. Okay. Anyway, I'll uh, keep it there and take this wire out gently. Okay. So, as you said, as I said, the Gaia wire and these other wires are not too friendly at the tip, and we've had a couple of tears at the distal tip. Okay, so now let me take one way to great shot and see what we've done. Again, it's important to be patient in CTOs and not to be in a hurry. Okay. in a small branch. It looks like already we have some antigens. For some reason there is some difficulty there. The Gaia must have raised a flap there.
Okay, what I will do is just dilate and then see what we can do. Okay, okay so get us a bigger balloon. Yeah. This is a 2 2 0. Oh, yeah. Before dilating with this, could you give uh, one or two cc of contrast and see what's hap happening anti-gradely? Yeah, well, let me just finish the dilatation and then have a look. Then forward with balloon, please. Yeah. The problem is once you get into a problem, okay. Now we are good. Yeah. Okay, go up there now. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Keep left. Keep left. Okay, go up here again. So once you're with the soft wire, you're more comfortable wherever it is. Get it left. We got the iris open, so, so no anti-grade injection to the extra iris can be the Okay. Okay, let's take the iris down one. So Ramesh, what is your strategy in such a um, I, I would like to first do an integrated injection to see what's happening, now that the wire is securely in position. Yeah. The advantage of the IVS is that we are damn sure what are you doing? Two millimeter balloon down, I think it should go. Okay, there we go. <laughs> One minute. Wait, man. Stop the eyes, please. Yeah, just come forward a bit. And there. Okay, let's start imaging from there. So, can you see the there? Yeah, we can see the IVS. Yeah, you can make it bigger. Some clock here, if you see from 3 to 7 o'clock position. And vessel appears to be to 5 here. And you can just see that uh, so you can see uh, some hematoma here, dissection and hematoma. Still it is uh, inside the lumen, it is in the true lumen, it is in the true lumen here, true lumen again. Might be because of the wire went subindimally and that would have created a little hematoma there. At the yeah, around yeah, the this is a side branch. This is a side branch. And it is uh, full and full uh, through true lumen. Means uh, true plot. It is an minimal plot tracking. Put it off, please. So we are very sure that we are inside the lumen. So now, if you want, we can take a picture. But uh, now you are very so sure. Much, yeah. Much, what? Yeah. Uh, Ajit, now you are very sure that you can, you know, uh, that yeah. you 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 yeah. can inject yeah. now. Yeah. 
Yeah, the advantage of eyes that you have in your hand, as Vijay said, is that you know you're damn sure what you're doing, and now we can be very confidently taking an. Yeah. Okay. So we start our chanting from where we started our eyes, and most probably we have to come all the way up to the Astiyam. Stop. Go to the PA cranium. Maybe some the dissection in the distal. Yeah. That appears the Gaia, Gaia wire induced, I think. Yeah. Dissection. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that is why the wire was not going freely into the PLV. Okay, just PA cranium nicely. I just want the tube done. So I, I will just take a retrograde injection and. Yeah, most probably that was a dissection. You show me the anti-grade shot. Yeah, we'll take one more anti-grade if you want. <coughs> That's filling, but there is a dissection. So we have to use another wire to get into the PLV. Do you need to do it? Uh, or you want to just leave it? Fix the mid RCA and uh, I think that should uh, be enough actually. It may get, once the wire comes out, uh, yeah. it may get occluded. Um, what do you think is the no, because anti-grade flow is quite okay, Timmy 3 and uh, you know, rather than meddling with that and worsening it, I, I would prefer just to strain the mid RCA and come out. Uh, can uh, Very small vessel though. Yeah. yeah, that's another reason why yeah. you don't need to chase so that. A small vessel. And the reason why the retrograde yeah. is yeah. not f showing filling is because the anti-grade flow has come up. It is TME3. That is why your yeah. retrograde yeah. flow has yeah. come down. Uh, I think yeah. personally I would just uh, yeah. Well, yeah. fix the mid arch. fix the stents and then make a take. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What would the, what uh, would others do, fire. audience? Would you defer? Would you try to chase that dissected distal RCA and try to fix it? Then we'll take a long or huh? Any Fine. opinion from audience? Because distal vessel is a small vessel, deceased. No, stenting yeah. is not a great option for that. If at all you can do a prolonged balloon dilatation if you get into the true lumen. Instead of that, I think you can just leave it because the many a times they heal. Yeah, I think that uh, this two tip of the uh, Gaia did pick a flat. Yeah. So I think that that was the issue. So what I'll do is I'll try to fix the stent in the mid and the proximal part and then have a look whether we need to do anything. Sir, Dr. Kesha Muthi here. Uh, yes. We have only six Muthi more minutes uh, for live case, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, you tell us when we are done, we will keep going. Okay, so we had all the issues related to CTO here. Uh, another question, Ajit, when you had gone into the acute marginal uh, before getting into the true lumen at that time, could be because the, uh, the wire was uh, beyond the occlusion, could we have dilated with a 1.1 millimeter balloon at that stage itself? because the proximal portion of the uh, occlusion was more, you know, severe than towards the acute marginal branch and then opening the proximal half of the CTO and then taking an anti-grade injection and a, uh, uh, you know, the f uh, floppy wire at that stage, uh, was it an option? No, I'm just asking for a discussion case. Uh, uh, I really wouldn't do that. Okay. I will just take a lateral and then see how we are. Because you were very sure that you were in the acute marginal at that time. Yeah, well, the first time we were clearly in the false lumen. 
Uh, yeah, that is and in the, in uh, the main RCA, right? Yeah. yeah. We can come back a bit. I'll just come back a bit and then take one more shot. It's difficult to see down. Yeah, I think we just deploy that. Well, yeah. Go. What's the size of this tent which you use? Go up a bit more. Okay. Maybe you can put it's back. a two, two, two five. On, on it. LAO on the lumber. Come LAO. back to the LAO. And so this is a 48? 38. 34. 34. Okay. So we'll just measure the. And then dial it once more. Yeah. Yeah. So the disease was right from the ostium, so we're going to do that. So, 30 would be okay. 30. Okay. okay, let's get the two five thirty. So what we have five? only three more minutes at my time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we'll just finish this and then take a picture and then see how we are. I understood that yesterday's program went off very well, went off very well and uh, congratulations Suresh and all the organizing committee for the organizing such a very good meeting. I'll check. I'll check. Back a bit more. Okay. Take a scenic view. So we have an overlap here. Okay. So that's good. Go up there. Twelve, fourteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Yes. Then we can dive it. Keep a two five below that. What? Fourteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Big okay. plate. Big plate. Big plate. Twenty. So obviously now the issue is how the distal vessel look. Yeah. Proximally you could probably take a 3 O and then dilate proximal half. Yeah. Okay, let me just take a shot now to see how the distal mm -hmm. vessel looks. Cranial, please. Um, 
you you will have to extend it i think yeah get okay i will try to get into the other branch probably use a micro catheter and, and take an injection distally and then check confirm the true lumen before you strain yeah get to the talker sir uh, the, the satellite yep. time is over that's what uh, the transmission okay uh, please said. go ahead please go ahead suresh uh, i'll try to fix it Uh, Ajit, thank you for the wonderful demonstration yeah. of the uh, IVERS in a setting like this, and it was a wonderful case. We enjoyed it. Please give Ajit and team is a big hand. Thank you, Ajit. Thank you, Vijay. Thank you very thank much. You, no, thank you. You, you work on it, I think.